Hi, today we're talking about how we can improve the operational performance of wind farms. So sometimes we're dealing with clients who have underperforming wind farms. What might be the causes of those problems, Tim? I, I guess you'd be looking at probably three main areas of potential underperformance. Uh, first and foremost, you'd be looking at windiness, um, how the period of operation to date, how well that measures up against the long term uh, wind speed for the site as part of a pre-construction estimate you might be looking at between 10 and 20 years of data feeding into that analysis whereas a site might only have been operating for one or two and that might be uh, significantly below the long-term wind speed of the site. I guess after that you'd be looking at the availability of the assets. Um, there may have been periods of constraint, um, say grid curtailment, that wasn't anticipated pre-construction and therefore the asset might have been either curtailed or turned off and also there might be uh, maintenance periods that will have impacted upon the availability of the site and thirdly um, suboptimal power performance of the wind turbines in the particular site in question and, uh, the site might not have standard conditions that the sales or warranted power curve was measured against and that divergence may cause um, a, a different power performance than what was expected pre-construction. Yeah, I think there are other reasons for suboptimal performance uh, which are probably more subtle than uh, the wind condition itself. Uh, for example, the yaw misalignment that the turbine not facing the wind as it should, as it should be, yeah. or uh, pitch angle, the pitch schedule may not be optimal um, because of uh, uh, high wind shear or whatever, the, uh, the, the, the wrong calibration uh, pitch angle. Um, uh, and also, some, some of them can be quite, quite obvious. So you see the blade, uh, the painting starts to fall off, and the, the aerodynamic uh, performance uh, to degrade uh, over time. I think some some even more subtle issues such as you have degradation of this electrical and me me mechanical system and the control uh, parameters that were set up for those conditions over time have changed yeah. and just might just it might just take you to tweak those parameters a little bit to bring the power back up but you can expect the turbine when it starts to run uh, when it run into 10 years the conditions the turbine itself uh, maybe just a sensor itself being deg 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 degraded, and they, those can be uh, or can also be the issue. And what would you say? You mentioned those sort of three issues. There's sort of a fourth one in there, which might be that the the expectations, the pre-construction estimate, has has over predicted. Mm -hmm. What would you say to people that suggest that there's often a bias, uh, an optimistic bias in pre-construction estimates? Yeah, I think. Uh, that's more true, say, a few years ago, uh, but over time, last few years, there have been quite a good amount of feedback uh, loop from the operational assets uh, that the industry had adjusted the model uh, to, uh, I think nowadays, I won't say this, uh, there's a clear op uh, optim op optimism in the estimate, it's more like how we can narrow down the uncertainty it is to meet right meet more in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think the whole industry recognises as a a pretty significant issue. Certainly certainly when I started out about ten years ago, I think there was a there was a clear bias between oper um, estimates and operation. But there's been a number of round robin exercises undertaken by the industry where we've looked at um, on a set site inputs pre construction and outputs operating and through that process um, the, the the difference between an estimate and, and reality that that difference is, is uh, has decreased significantly yeah. okay so we've talked about the sort of the issues what might be the causes what what are the solutions what can uh, an asset owner do to improve improve their performance? I think I think the first the first step definitely is to actually recognize there is there is a problem, 
and it'd be amazed how many assets have been ignored for so many years without analyzing the data. So we have seen uh, projects that have been pretty much ignored for 10 years. Then we look at the data, you realize that the power degradation has been about 1% per year. Yep. But if you look at those, da those, those assets, say, 10 years back, then you, had, you, can, you have, would have saved a lot of money. Um, uh, yeah, but, and also I think there's a, uh, that, uh, 10 years ago, the turbine wasn't uh, recording as many signals as, as it is today. And today with, with a much sophisticated scalar system, uh, more, 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 sen more sensors putting into it, it's possible to, uh, to actually uh, dive into this data and find, find, uh, find out what is actually the, the problem. I think that would be the first step to take. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, from, and, also, and at least that point to direction. And it's in, um, the next step, I think, is to, uh, to find out whether the, the problem was fixing. Some, some of them may be too small, some of them may be cost more than, than, than the benefits. So, uh, so, that, so I think the, if we do analysis, uh, we can actually pinpoint how much energy you can estimate, at least have a, have a f figure, how much energy you can gain uh, uh, after you fix those problems. So you can have an understanding of the cause and benefits of it. And is that through just pure data analysis? Yeah. Is that, so that's relatively cheap and sort of straightforward to do? Uh, it, it is today, I'll say, because with, with the better tools, mm. uh, um, better computer, uh, computational power, and, and also it just uh, seems like the data that you recorded by turbines are more organized than what it was before. And people are now realizing the issue and recording, putting more sensors in and just become more possible. I think it's through an improved experience and track record as well, I think. Yeah. The more operational data you see, the more that you can, um, well, for want of a better word, pigeonhole um, particular um, areas of loss and, and define how much potential energy you might be losing due to that factor. Yep. And then you can look at um, how much it may cost to uh, mitigate mitigate against that and then if you, you can you can have um, yeah you can you can properly financially evaluate where improvements can be made and, and how, if they are cost effective or not yeah. so Matt you, you said that there's all this data coming out of the wind turbines this is all going to the OEM and the asset manager aren't they looking out for maximizing the yield what's the benefit in having yet another sort of independent view on this yeah, I guess uh, this how, depending how uh, the performance of the OEM are measured, and normally they are measured against availability. How um, how, how long the turbine has been offline for for official period? That's I think they they try to minimize that, which is very important. But that for availability is a very black and white issue. It had a on and off. But for other issues, a suboptimal a suboptimal of performance. There are so many uh, different shades of grey in there, and you need, I think, you need a, a third pair of, pair of eyes uh, to actually look into the data and provide a independent view, uh, a perspective of the performance. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's good to step away from the day-to-day -day operation. It gives you a better idea of potential biases that exist within the data, um, and that way you can you can really hone in on specific areas under performance, definitely. Yeah. So I guess what we're saying is, if you've got an underperforming wind farm, there are many, uh, many reasons this might be, and it's quite easy to identify, or it's quite quick to identify and zoom in down through, through just pure data analysis. And from that, you can then make informed decisions as to the sort of cost benefit yeah. on um, on the next steps. Increasingly so. Yeah. And uh, I think it's also worth adding that even though you don't see a wind farm that's obviously underperforming, it's still worth looking into it because there are subtle issues that still, that is, still a improvement can be done. Yeah. Yep. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or if the team can help with your project. <laughs>